There are four different types of hunger. Did you know that all hunger isn't the same? So I dieted for well over 20 years, going up and down in my weight, even all throughout having six children. And I finally was able to find a way, once I learned some things about my brain and some practical things about the way it works in relation to food, so that I was able to just consistently become a normal eater and find a happy place with my weight, no longer needing to diet ever again. And I have created workshops and programs that have helped thousands of other women create the same results for them. Knowing the four different types of hunger is really helpful, and I'm about to tell them to you. Hi, Carrie Nygaard here. You can check the description to like and subscribe or to um, get the link to join me for one of my free workshops or to join my program right away and work with me to create the same results that you're seeking to find consistency with food from a brain science perspective. So there's four different types of hunger. The first one is physical hunger. This one's kind of a no duh, but we tend to think that all hunger is physical hunger and it's not. Physical hunger is when our body's telling us, hey, blood sugar levels have dropped and I'm ready to receive some more energy so we can keep living life, okay? So how does that feel? We know we're having symptoms of true physical hunger. Perhaps we might find that we have like a dip in our energy, or we might feel a little slight headache, or we might feel um, a, a hollow feeling in our gut, or even some grumbles, Okay, a dip in energy and overall malaise as well. These symptoms are symptoms of true hunger. And they're not a problem, but they do get stronger the longer we go without eating food. This happens when ghrelin is, ghrelin is the hormone that lets our bodies or our brains know that, hey, we're hungry, time to eat. There's also leptin that's kind of the overseer of the whole body, so to speak, over the kind of like the foreman over the fat stores of the body saying, yes, we need more, we need more fat stores, send more cues of hunger. Okay. There is such a thing as becoming leptin resistant, meaning you could have leptin in your body telling your brain, trying to get to your brain to tell your brain, hey, we've got enough fat stores, but your brain's not getting the message. Um, similar to some people can have excess levels of insulin in their body, but the, the body continues to produce insulin, becomes resistant. The same thing can happen with leptin. Uh, but this isn't a video about leptin, but that's something that I can talk about in another video. The second type of hunger is senses, hunger that comes from your senses. So you could be walking down the street, minding your own business, and you might smell fresh baked bread or something from a restaurant nearby. And just the smell will create a desire. Ooh, that smells good. I want to eat. Now we have a type of hunger that's not true physical hunger. It's coming because of what we've experienced from our senses. So that's one type of hunger is hunger coming from our senses. The next type of hunger is emotional hunger. I spend lots of my time coaching women's minds, coaching their brains around emotional hunger. Emotional hunger is when we go to food to solve for our emotions or to create an emotion that we're seeking. Emotional hunger is so normal, yet there's so much shame around this. I can't tell you how many women come to me feeling so much shame that they have emotional responses and reactions and habits having to do around their habits with food. But it's so normal. We have to eat in order to survive, and we are emotional beings. Everything that we do in this life has to do with an emotion. We, we strive to have goals because we want the feeling that will come when we achieve the goal. Every action we take comes from an emotion. Yet the mass majority of us are so poorly equipped. We're, we're what I would call, um, we, we're emotionally immature, meaning we don't have a basic understanding of what it even means to feel an emotion. And we don't know what to do with the emotions when they come. So of course, when an emotion comes, especially if it's an uncomfortable emotion, we might do things that would try to distract us from that emotion like eating. And anytime we eat, there is a release of dopamine in our brain, right? And dopamine signals to our brain, it's what we call a feel-good hormone. So whenever dopamine is released in the brain, it signals or is telling the brain, hey, this activity that you're doing, I'm rewarding you for doing this activity by releasing this feel-good hormone so that you'll keep doing it. Your brain associates survival anytime dopamine or other feel-good hormones are released in regards to an action we've taken. The problem with this is that when we feel pain in our life, say we're feeling anxious or stressed or worried, an emotion that's painful, we think that we need to go to food to solve for it. Now, 
eating food because of an emotional hunger is not wrong. We just want to understand it to see if it's actually even being helpful. Is food helping me with my emotions here or is it just making matters worse? And knowing a few things about emotions and how to even just feel an emotion so it doesn't overcome you is basic skills that we just as a society as a whole don't have across the board. We're taught our basic numbers and our basic ABCs, but we are not taught how to just basically feel an emotion without the fear of it overcoming us and taking it and taking over. So emotional hunger is another type of hunger. Uh, then there is habitual hunger, or it's also known as practical hunger. This is when we eat based upon, because that's just what we do. So we look at the clock, 12 o'clock, time for lunch. We eat whether we physically feel hungry or not. It's right. It's something that we're just in the habit of doing. We wake up, we eat, whether we're actually feel, feeling true hunger or not. Um, a, a practical hunger would be when you preemptively eat in a way to stave off hunger later in the day. So let's say you have a, you're, you're going to have a busy day and maybe you won't have many breaks in order to be able to eat food. So you might eat a big meal in preparation for that big day where there won't be many breaks to be able to um, fuel your body. So the four different types of hunger, none of these types of hunger are good or bad. They're all going to be experienced because we have human bodies and because we have brains that are hardwired to survive and because food is so basic to our survival and it has an emotional component with it because of the dopamine that's released anytime we eat. The key here is to be mindful over what type of hunger you're experiencing so that you can solve for it in a way that aligns with the results that you want to achieve. If you emotionally eat every time you feel, feel an emotion, that leads, to feelings at, that leads to feeling out of control, not even knowing how to solve for your emotions. It leads to binge eating, overeating, having just these habits with food that don't leave us feeling like the kind of um, person that we want to feel. We feel out of control with food. Um, you absolutely can eat when you smell food and it smells good. The question is, is this going to help me or is it going to keep me away from the goals and the type of relationship I want to have with food? All of them are allowed. The question is, what type of experience do you want to have? What kind of relationship do you want to have with food? And here's the big key. How do I stay consistent with what I want to create through feeling all the different types of hunger? If you want to learn more, click on one of my links for a workshop and join me. Bye-bye.